Thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I'm introducing Dr. Francisco Westermeyer. He's a lecturer at FH Uranium, University of Applied Science in Austria. Interested in the cardiovascular and metabolic consequences of diabetes and obesity since his early career, Francisco is now focused on identifying potential cardiovascular abnormalities in people with ME. In 2019, he was awarded a Ramsey Research Grant by Solve ME to study endothelial function and ME CFS. And in 2022, he and colleagues published a paper entitled Decreased NO Production in Endothelial Cells Exposed to, to Plasma in ME CFS Samples. In the coming months, Vestermeyer and his team will investigate the reducibility of people with ME to produce nitric oxide using samples from the UK ME CFS Biobank. And now I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Vestermeyer. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks for this opportunity to talk about our research. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought probably uh, it was a good idea to start my presentation by explaining a little bit about this uh, interesting molecule. Actually, it's a gas called nitric oxide. And um, yeah, so um, the Nobel Prize in Physiology in, uh, sorry, just one second. Yeah, now I can see my screen. Uh, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1998 was awarded jointly to this American pharmacologist. You can see them in this slide for the discoveries concerning nitric oxide, a molecule called also NO, as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system, which includes so the cardiovascular system, the heart, blood vessels, and blood. Um, interestingly, this was the first discovery that a gas could act as a signaling molecule in, in our organism. It was particularly uh, surprising since nitric oxide is totally different from any other known signal molecule and so unstable that it's degraded within 10 seconds, so it's quite unstable. Um, but before going into detail about nitric oxide, um, I think it's interesting if we briefly describe what is a signaling molecule. So the concept included in the title, as you can see here. Um, by the way, if you are interested in, 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 in getting uh, more info about my slides, you can scan the, the code located over here to get more information either from the web page, I, I, I took these slides or the research papers that were already included in, in this presentation. Okay, look at this. The a signaling molecule is a molecule responsible for transmitting information between cells in our body. So this example, uh, which includes antennas and radios can also be applied into biology. Interestingly, so depending on the type of players, so for example, you can see uh, different receptors, uh, transducers, amplifiers, an external signal can produce different biological responses across cell types. So this is quite relevant at the moment of interpreting our results and consequently the conclusion we make based on, based on them. So for example, if we stimulate cells, the responses not, uh, uh, don't necessarily will be the same because it depends on the cells and the uh, different um, the, um, proteins that one particular cell express. Um, let's get back to nitric oxide in detail. This is an excellent review published uh, in Nature Reviews Cardiology. This review summarizes the pleiotropic roles of nitric oxide in biology and its crucial uh, function in cardiovascular homeostasis. Um, first of all, in cardiomyocytes, which are the cells uh, that um, um, promote contraction, nitric oxide through different signaling pathways modulates cardiac contractility. 
so relaxation and also mitochondrial respiration. Also at the cardiac level, the expression of neuronal nitric oxide synthase, which is the enzyme that produces nitric oxide, and by modulating both sympathetic and uh, vague nerve cells can regulate the heart rate. So this is more or less the first um, uh, well-known function of nitric oxide at cardiac level. Second, interestingly, in addition, through its diffusion to the vessel lumen, nitric oxide can inhibit platelet aggregation and thrombosis. This particular function is in line with recent evidence of increased coagulation in plasma from, from ME patients. So it can all it so the uh, function of nitric oxide can can uh, be connected with this uh, recent evidence in, in, in ME-CFS. Um, in our particular uh, research line, in the basal wall, nitric oxide synthesis uh, by endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which is th this enzyme, regulates uh, vascular um, smooth muscle cells relaxation which promotes vasodilation. Mm -hmm. So the effect of this gas, um, it's um, so the, the target cells are vascular smooth muscle cells. Also nitric oxide uh, regulates angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood bases. So this is a good summary about the general um, functions of nitric oxide in the cardiovascular system. So, but how did the idea of studying the deal this function in ME uh, come up a few years ago? So it's well known that exercise promotes cardiovascular health involving nitric oxide and vasodilation. Uh, so we tried to place ourselves at that time on the opposite side. So since post-exertional malaise is a worsening of all ME related symptoms, we thought, okay, what if we what if the release of nitric oxide is defected in, in MEC FS uh, patients? You know, nitric oxide plays a key role in the cardiovascular protection um, induced by exercise, by cheer stress. And so it's, we thought maybe there is a, a, a defected function in, in, in this uh, syndrome. Um, so, when we started this research line four years ago, only one study had described vascular dysfunction in ME patients. So fortunately, this has changed since then, and at least four original research articles have also supported that hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis. The ones we have published, uh, we have published, uh, fortunately, are highlighted in blue, and I would like to uh, introduce them more or less over the next uh, slides. Okay, this is uh, this graphical abstract uh, describes our first study published last year in scientific reports. We focus on analyzing the expression of several microRNAs previously described to regulate the expression of ENOS in diseases linked to vascular abnormalities. So we use plasma from um, the UK uh, MECFS Biobank to evaluate the expression of these microRNAs. So we found that the expression of these uh, molecules were, uh, was higher in ME patients than in healthy controls. Uh, this is a brief summary about the, the microRNAs. Uh, we found increase in, 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 in samples uh, from ME uh, CFS patients. Um, this is the result. Uh, as you can see in this slide, so both moderate and severely affected patients have increased circulating levels of these microRNAs compared to the control group. We got samples uh, divided into three different groups. So one group, uh, healthy controls and uh, severely and moderately uh, uh, affected patients. So we did not find differences between moderate and severely affected patients, at least by analyzing the expression of these microRNAs. Um, then, uh, by using different statistical uh, uh, approaches, 
Uh, for example, the principal component analysis in this case showed that some patients with ME were clearly different from healthy controls in the abundance of these microRNAs, but it seems not to be related to disease severity. So to complement this um, uh, visual in interpretation of the principal components, uh, linear discriminant, and, uh, discriminant analysis uh, suggested that by using this data, so the, the, the data uh, uh, linked to the microRNAs, uh, we were able to uh, classify around 60% of patients with at least 80% of probability to be uh, included in, 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 in uh, classified as uh, ME-CFS patients. Uh, then we, um, you can see here, we perform a different uh, bioinformatic analysis and we propose endothelial related mechanisms potentially involved in vascular abnormalities. We use this microRNAs and I'm gonna show you the next slide. Um, we identify several biological processes associated with these uh, molecules from a gene list validated uh, experimentally. So for example, uh, functional pathway and enrichment analysis show that five out of 20 most overrepresented biological processes are associated with regulation of vascular development, followed by uh, reproductive structure development, response to, to oxidative stress, uh, different uh, signaling pathways linked to um, uh, oxygen, so regulation of oxygen levels and et cetera. So it, these molecules are um, closely connected with endothelial function also by using this bioinformatic uh, analysis. Um, then in our second study, where we uh, also use the same uh, plasma samples. Uh, it, this paper was recently published in vascular pharmacology beginning of this, uh, this year in January, February. Uh, we tried to move one step forward uh, by incubating endothelial cells with plasma samples from ME patients. So this is the graphical abstract of this paper and we evaluated both the expression and activity of ENOS in presence of several molecules, these ones well described to promote the release of nitric oxide, such as insulin, bradykinin, histamine, and acetylcholine. Uh, these molecules, this is also a good representation, it's also a good summary. Uh, these molecules can activate activate either uh, tyrosine kinase receptors or G protein uh, couple receptors, also called GPCR receptors, to increase the release of nitric oxide in endothelial cells. Uh, since uh, the activation of ENOS can be also estimated by measuring uh, the uh, HITS phosphorylation at different uh, uh, sites, we also evaluated two regions linked to HITS inhibition. So this uh, um, serine uh, 1177, it's well known to activate the enzyme and on the other side, this phosphorylation at threonine 495, it's connected or has been uh, reported to uh, um, decrease the activity of ENOS. Um, let's see now what we observed in this uh, uh, um, experimental uh, design. Uh, the production of nitric oxide was reduced. So if you compare, for example, the, the, the green circles with the uh, red ones, um, in cells incubated with plasma from ME patients compared to uh, with ones incubated with plasma from, from healthy individuals. Uh, in the same line, uh, those differences, if you pay attention, if you place your focus on these ones, these bars, uh, the difference were more pronounced in the presence of GPCR uh, agonists, uh, such as bradykinin, uh, histamine, and acetylcholine. Um, since trionine, trionine uh, it's associated with reduced uh, nitric oxide formation in endothelial cells. 
we also aimed at comparing this phosphorylation between cells exposed to plasma from healthy controls and ME patients. So every, every single um, circle represents uh, the plasma from one uh, patient, either a patient or a, a healthy individual. Although no differences uh, between the group, so we found between uh, by comparing the expression of ENOS and uh, at the protein and uh, mRNA level, we observe that the phosphorylation of this, the, of this uh, enzyme, the phosphorylation that can apparently inhibit the enzyme is higher in uh, cells incubated with plasma from patients than compared to cells incubated with uh, uh, plasma from uh, healthy individuals. Then, this is a relationship between the NO production and, hit, uh, and the inhibitory uh, phosphorylation at training uh, at this site and 495. Uh, we observed an inverse correlation between NO production and the phosphorylation of this region and hubis incubated with, with plasma from ME uh, patients. So findings that at least in part um, can uh, show more or less, because it's not, of course, there are many uh, other mechanisms involved, can um, uh, more or less uh, associate this reduction in the production of nitric oxide with one mechanism, which is for us interesting. So we can move forward at least by analyzing more in detail this, this uh, potential cellular mechanisms. Um, finally, we are currently focus on analyzing from a metabolic perspective, the biochemical pathways involving the production of nitric oxide in endothelial cells. So in, in, in healthy blood basils, uh, endothelial nitric oxide synthase or ENOS is responsible for generating uh, NO by converting this amino acid L-arginine into a nitric oxide and L-citrulline. Conversely, increased levels of these metabolites, so for example, ACDMA, ADMA, these ones, um, have been described to inhibit the activity of these enzymes or the uptake of this amino acid by endothelial cells. So in the laboratory now, we have already established a method by using HPLC uh, to simultaneously measure eight or nine molecules previously described to uh, regulate the synthesis of nitric oxide in, in endothelial uh, cells. So our main aim is, and this is basically the project funded by uh, Solve Me, uh, we, we are going to investigate if uh, uh, the levels of these molecules, for example, L-arginine, L-citrulline, uh, ADMA, L-ornithine, homoarginine, so several of, of them, uh, are altered in plasma samples from uh, ME uh, uh, CFS patients, and also to identify potential biochemical pathways associated with this NO-related uh, endothelial dysfunction in ME CFS. So finally, I would like to thank, uh, of course, my colleagues and some students at uh, uh, my university in Graz, also colleagues and friends from Chile, Portugal, and Argentina. Um, cure uh, me, because we have received the samples from, from them. They have support us right from the beginning. Also, ME Research UK, the foundation we uh, which supported us uh, during our first uh, uh, studies. Uh, Ramsey Award Program, of, of course, and I would like to especially thank CFS Hilfe Austria, all the study participants for donating their blood to the UK ME CFS Biobank, ME CFS community, including, including uh, patients and family caregivers uh, who have raised funds to facilitate our studies. So thank you. Danke und gracias. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Vestemeyer. Really appreciate the talk. Uh, we are opening it up. Some of you have already put questions in the chat and we will start to go through um, those questions and try to get everyone's questions answered. I'm gonna start off with this one. 
could low nitrous oxide cause a chronically low body temperature? Interesting question. Honestly, um, I don't know. Actually, this is my my honest response. It, it's an interesting question. Actually, I'm going to take some notes, <laughs> but uh, this is something that we have not evaluated. Um, we um, we have not included that parameter in a parameter in our um, um, records. So. Maybe it's something that we can also um, place our focus. Great. Sounds like a well-timed question for where you sure. are in this Thank work. Sure. Thank you. Do you have a theory about how nitrous oxide results influence the post-exertional malaise reaction, which seems to be a complicated signaling reaction? Yeah, this is an interesting point. Uh, actually, I didn't mention anything because of the time, but the 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 um, reduction or the decreased level of nitric oxide not only depends on the activity of enos. There is also an interesting um, pathway uh, which is connected with oxidative stress that can also induce the reduction of nitric oxide. So probably oxidative stress and several molecules that can also increase their levels when we perform exercise, when we do exercise, can also be connected with, with uh, the reduction of nitric oxide, and consequently, this post-exertional uh, malaise. One point is that our results, and that's why I included this uh, uh, slide with uh, um, uh, different players, our results were also were uh, only um, um, focused on endothelial cells, but we we need to keep in mind that nitric oxide needs to act on vascular smooth smooth cells. So we cannot rule out the possibility of several cells and uh, can uh, promote this endothelial dysfunction or be involved. And also uh, different pathways like uh, uh, oxidative stress or metabolic abnormalities. So probably in our second or third study, we can go uh, towards uh, that direction more in detail to connect more dots. Excellent. Have you measured perioxynitrate levels in the cells? Could the MECFS cells exhibit greater superoxide levels resulting in heightened nitrous oxide to perioxynitrate nitrite conversion? Not yet, but this is the plan. So it, actually this is uh, uh, one of our next uh, steps. Uh, so that um, study can continue the previous one because we, we cannot rule out the possibility that this reduced level of nitric oxide can be influenced by uh, um, these uh, molecules like uh, peroxynitrate and, and also oxidative stress. Great, thank you. Uh, Linda asks, it may be too early to ask this question, but I think we're all wondering, so we're gonna ask it anyway, but does this research point toward treatment? In other words, if your hypotheses are found to be robust? A treatment. Mm. You have to be super responsible. Um, honestly, uh, although we have found um, differences in the expression and the activity of ENOS, I think there are more than one molecule uh, involved. So in terms of treatment, um, for example, I would like to um, I would like to comment on the results, for example, that uh, Professor Pretorius 
sorry if I'm not pronouncing her name properly, but for example, nitric oxide can connect with coagulation. So since this molecule can uh, inhibit coagulation, all of this process can, for example, can be uh, um, applied or potential treatments can be applied into that field. Also, since nitric oxide is connected with our uh, vagus nerve or uh, uh, parasympathetic uh, activity, it's also uh, an, a field that it's of value or interest uh, to be uh, to be analyzed. Um, I don't. I wouldn't like to be. Um, uh, uh, only focus on nitric oxide itself. I think all the mechanisms that can be activated or inhibited by this molecule are uh, uh, worth investigating. Thank you. I think you point out the inherent compl complexities. I'm going to go out of order because the research by Dr. Pretorius was mentioned. Um, obviously, you're aware of it, which was part of the question, but the other part was do you have any additional comments on that research? Um, yeah, so for example, um, in particularly, uh, if nitric oxide is really in this case promoting somehow the uh, hypercoagulability in, in ME CFAs or at least in that set of uh, patients, uh, the, the potential results we can obtain in our third uh, study, so for example, if the levels of molecules that can inhibit the activity of ENOS can be, for example, correlated with levels of uh, uh, or the, the grade of coagulability that they have already found. This is something that I can eventually connect, so our potential results with the, the evidence recently published by Professor Pretorius. Thank you. There's a question here. I'm, I'm not sure I have it complete, but I'm going to put in some words. Um, do, it's really about the role of nitric oxide and hypothalamus regulation. Sorry? Is there a role in NO for hypothalamus regulation? Hypothalamus regulation. Um, honestly, I don't know. So um, if there is a role, so played by the neuronal uh, endothelial nitric uh, uh, enzyme, I don't know, I don't know. So the only neuronal uh, uh, isoform that uh, at least uh, in the cardiovascular system has been well described it's the the one which is in close connection with the nerve the vagus nerve and the cardiomyocytes which i can say is that uh, the blood brain barrier which is also formed by the telial cells uh, uh, the uh, the molecules that can uh, pass through this barrier also are regulated by the uh, uh, function of this uh, or the production of nitric oxide. So at least in the blood-brain barrier, we can eventually connect with brain function. But in terms of hypothalamus, uh, I don't have much more information so far. Thank you. It's, it's a popular topic about the role of nitric oxide. Another related question or question on that topic is, could low NO cause or affect low blood volume often found in ME? Yeah, it could be possible. Also, um, for example, as every single molecule, uh, nat the levels of nitric oxide are also controlled by the enzymes that can reduce its uh, two-sided coin. So for example, eventually the mechanisms that can uh, uh, increase the level of nitric oxide are decreased or the ones 
to uh, stimulate so the or the decrease the levels can also be uh, uh, affected so it could be possible that uh, for example the reduced uh, blood uh, pressure um, can also be connected with this uh, defective production of nitric oxide in some in some patients Thank you. So many questions. We may have to have you back, but I'm going to continue to go through them. Wonderful curiosity. Mark asks, are compounds like nitrite likely to help or hinder NO production and ME? Molecules like, sorry? Nitrite, NO2. Um... Yeah. Eventually, uh, hmm. I wouldn't say if they can be benef benefits or uh, can provide a benefits or not, um, because since there are several pathways involved in the production of nitric oxide, it wouldn't be so. Uh, um, 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 dogmatic in that sense. Um, at least from our perspective, so at least from a cellular perspective, when we incubate cells with derivatives of nitrates, we can stimulate the production of nitric oxide. But if that really means that in a more complex organ or uh, uh, in, 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 from a physiological per perspective, we can really increase the release of nitric oxide, I would be a bit more cautious. Thank you. Marty asks, does the research you have done so far expl explain frequent anti-cardiolipin antibody syndrome or antiphospholipid syndrome with MECFS? No, we have not uh, studied those parameters uh, yet. But since they can also, because this enzyme can be regulated uh, by several mechanisms, one of them can affect the expression and the activity of phenol. So it's also an interesting possibility to, to, to analyze in the near future. Thanks. And Diane asks, would supplementing with L-arginine, L-ornithine, or L-citrulline help increase NO? So, as I mentioned before, in one of the, 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 the previous slides, um, the production of nitric oxide uh, involves the uptake of L-arginine in endothelial cells. But we have to consider that in case we consume L-arginine uh, components or derivatives or linked, uh, if we have an increased amount of the inhibitors, uh, probably the production of nitric oxide uh, won't be uh, uh, increased, uh, although we are consuming uh, the substrates to produce the, this gas. So um, I don't know if it's more, later, more, or, later, more or less clear the, the response. So we need to evaluate first if the molecules that can, for example, reduce the uptake of L-arginine or some molecules in the cell that uh, have been described to reduce activity of ENOS are increased. So, and then we can could make a decision concerning uh, um, suministrating uh, this L-arginine components to increase or, uh, or improve the production of nitric oxide. I think there is a decision uh, that involves several uh, mechanisms and players. Do you think there's a link between the nitric oxide signaling and the fact that any CFS patients experience chest pain, mid chest, dull pain, left side, and a pounding heart as part of post-exertional malaise? 
could be possible based on the the, the first uh, part of the slide that uh, I uh, that describes the function of nitric oxide in the cardiovascular system, and since it's how this uh, enzyme and the nitric oxide itself can regulate the uh, 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 cardiomyocyte contraction, could could be eventually possible. But it's just you know as a based on that there are no uh, uh, studies focus on that so far, but it could be based on the, the physiological function. Great, and I'm gonna read a, a question from Douglas next. There was some talk of exploring the use of inacetal L-cysteine therapeutically to strengthen epithelial cell resistance to encephalopathy, one of the hypothesized sources of gray matter loss or brain fog. Would this suggest NAC, as well as another amino acid supplement, might reduce brain fog. And then the question points out um, uh, possibly NAC as a prophylactic against depression. Any comments on that? Well, um, depression. Yeah, I honestly, I, I, I don't feel that I'm, I'm not the right person to to talk about depression, honestly. So I'm not an expert at all in the, in that field. Uh, concerning the um, effect of acetylcholine, if 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 I got it right, uh, it's super well described that this molecule can increase the activity and the. Uh, release of nitric oxide in the dotelial cells. So at least from that perspective, from the cardiovascular system, um, there is a strong correlation, but um, I wouldn't say anything concerning depression and, and, and nitric oxide levels. Actually, we, we, we wrote a brief uh, statement in, the, in our first paper concerning depression and, and nitric oxide, but since we're not expert in that field, I would prefer uh, um, um, commenting only from a cardiovascular perspective. Thanks. Is there evidence that brain nitric oxide production is altered in ME, either at baseline or during post-exertional malaise? To our knowledge, there is no information concerning levels of nitric oxide in the, the brain, at least so far. Uh, to my knowledge, no evidence so far. So the measurement of nitric oxide it itself. Thanks. Do you have any thoughts about how a virus can promote nitric oxide dysfunction? Interesting. Yes, there is one uh, one of these herpes viruses that uh, SARS-CoV-2, for example. So there are a large body of evidence recently. One, uh, even the mechanisms uh, behind uh, the uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2, one of these uh, herpes viruses that can um, reduce the expression of ENOS. This is interesting, also the expression and consequently the activity of this enzyme. So there is evidence of uh, how these viruses of, uh, can um, affect the release of nitric oxide in the endothelial cells. Great, and next up a question about histamine. What is the role of histamine with the endometrial cells and could levels of histamine be increased? So histamine, it's interesting because it also uses, uh, it also increases the intracellular calcium levels. So it's a different mechanism. Um, histamine can induce through its receptor, GPCR1, the activity of ENOS and also increases the level of intracellular, the, the calcium intracellular levels. And uh, by uh, increasing or um, the amount of calcium from the uh, basicals or from uh, subcellular compartments like uh, ER, um, 
if there is a connection between the levels of histamine uh, and uh, uh, some evidence in describing MECFS patients could be interesting to be analyzed. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Is there any evidence that ME patients taking NO enhancing drugs, for example, nitroglycerin or other nitrodilators, sildenafil or taldilafil, report a decrease in certain symptoms? As far as I know, there is no evidence of uh, uh, the effect of these molecules on, on ME CFS patients. Uh, I would like to be super cautious concerning, you know, because it's quite easy or more or less, it depends on the country, but it's not so complicated sometimes to get this uh, uh, products from, from uh, internet. So I would be a little bit, you know, cautious concerning the use of this uh, uh, components, because uh, as I mentioned before, the vasodilation itself involves a lot of different uh, players. So uh, I would take those evidence or that evidence with more, uh, you know, uh, precaution. Thanks. This next question is going to reveal that I am an epidemiologist and not a biologist. So you may have to help and make sure I pronounce everything correctly. But Valentina asks, it seems that your findings tie in with Fluj and Mela and Scheinbin Bogen and Worth research in regards to, I'm not sure if it's an L or an I, arginine and GPCRs. Do you see that connection too? And do you think that autoantibodies against ACHR are central in at least a subgroup of post viral cases of ME? This is a really good question. Yeah, uh, I didn't mention that, but at least the samples uh, we got from the biobank, uh, we uh, identified only a subset of patients uh, who have increased level of microRNA. So based on that, apparently there is a subset of patients. So 50% of the patients uh, who suffer from ME have endothelial abnormalities. And that's a subgroup. There is ones who have, so the triggers are connected with uh, viral infections. So I think we need to clearly uh, stratify the patients in order to make better conclusions. Um, so it's an umbrella of a post uh, uh, viral in infection syndromes and there are different. So it's quite heterogeneous in some cases, the, the manifestations. Um, concerning the connection between uh, autoantibodies against GPCR receptors and um, the endothelial dysfunction, it can be possible. So it's one of the one of our assumptions. We unfortunately we did not measure in the samples we we use from the UK Biobank the levels of autoantibodies in order to clearly correlate our results with uh, this. Uh, uh, auto antibodies, but it's certainly something that we could evaluate in, in our next uh, project in order to establish, you know, a, a more uh, um, uh, reliable conclusion. Great. And Kate asks, any theories as to how NO related endothelial dysfunction started in people with MECFS? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Um, is there, can you please repeat the question? I didn't get you it bet. quite. Yeah, do you have any theories as to how nitric oxide related endothelial dysfunction started in people with MECFS? Um, so you mean the um, onset of this uh, syndrome? That's how I'm interpreting it. Like what, um, and feel free to jump in here. What, what was kind of the root of the dysfunction? 
mm -hmm. proximal cause initially. Yeah. For example, uh, we have some theories. Um, a recent paper published by Ron Davies uh, showed that, for example, levels of some the basic or normal proteins uh, expressed by the or released by the liver are apparently affected in MECFS. Um, So it depends on the trigger. So for example, as you mentioned before, I'm gonna to try to, to, to place my, my thoughts in order. Uh, if, this, if it's a virus that uh, has a trigger uh, for this disease, or in some cases, uh, these viruses can reduce the expression of ENOS and the release of nitric oxide. Uh, if it's, possible to really identify the cause or the, 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 the agent to, uh, uh, who is um, producing or, or triggering this disease, I think it could be more, uh, it would be easier to uh, um, establish potential pathways or uh, uh, signaling that can be affected in this syndrome. From our perspective, um, if it's, uh, for example, and that's why we have uh, 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 tried to uh, develop this new uh, study, if there is any metabolite involved in the production of nitric oxide, arginine metabolites, uh, and I mentioned the liver before because uh, all of these molecules are also metabolized by the liver, we could more or less go in some directions. But at least so far, um, we can also um, say something from uh, endothelial perspective. Thanks. What do you think about the use of solo dexide for endothelial damage? Which molecule, sorry? I could be pronouncing it wrong. Solo dexide, S U L O D E X I D E. I have not heard about that molecule before, honestly. Maybe you can, if it's possible to get those, uh, I have no access to the chat. Maybe I can, I can have a look at them more in detail, but at least so far. You bet we can um, get you a copy of the chat and that might Great. be Thank good you. for, there's a question about uh, a study reference. I think that's a good one that we could follow up Excellent. with later as well. All right, a question about nitrodilators. Oh, um, maybe a comment. The nitrodilators question was not suggesting any patients take them without evidence. Yep, we're not suggesting anyone take anything, no medical advice. It's all just about um, what the science is showing us um, outside of the patient population at this point. Rather, it was regarding the likelihood that many ME patients who are taking them for heart or other disorders under a physician's prescription. Oh, so I see what you're saying. Yeah, this is epidemiology. A retrospective study of such patients might be revealing. Um, so looking at those who've taken nitrodilators um, for an improved indication to see if it has this other impact. There were a few. I um, One more question about um, collaborations with Professor Chris Armstrong in Australia. Um, any collaborations or comments about um, that research? Uh, I have not, we have not established any collaboration with them so far. Um, so actually we, we collaborate with uh, Nuno Sepulveda and uh, Carmen Chaiven Bongen and Eliana Lacerda, but uh, at least so far we have not connected our research with, with them. So it will be 
great. So if we can combine our expertise and a different perspective, that would be really useful. We are open to collaborate, of course. Wonderful. Well, you did an amazing job, not only in presenting the science, but in asking many, many questions that your talk prompted so much interest in this topic. I want to shout out thanks uh, from all of us at Solve ME and a thank you to all who attended and had such fabulous questions. This will be as a slide set and recording available for you within the next few days. Dr. Vestemeyer, thank you so much for sharing your time. Thank you for inviting me.